And welcome, welcome to Piper Doug hasn't a clue what he's doing. On this episode, we're going to fix a tractor that we've never worked on before. And don't really know a whole heck of a lot about it. the things, the things that go whiz, bang, pop, and fart for all intents and purposes. Okay, the backstory on said tractor. I might assume, no, there we go. Um, this tractor came from the family farm. Um, we bought it when it was old and tired and continued to make it old and tired. Um, it's not pretty. It's not terribly powerful, but it's a tractor and it has spinny things at the back and a part to hook things that need the spinny things to. The great thing about this tractor, it has dual spinny things. Don't get that very often. Both active. Saves you having to spin the, uh, take the shafts out, spin them around or transfer the other shaft in. Don't like being shafted. So that's the one really great thing about this. This is the International Farm All 766. I am very partial to the o, the O6 internationals, um, but this is what we have. So the backstory, more recently, is prior to the farm sale, this tractor started having issues. The reason it doesn't have any hoods and stuff was its issues were already started long before that. A long time ago, in another farmyard, it wouldn't run. So, Piper Doug got in there and started pulling the wires out and then finding ones that make sparky sparky and then joining those ones to the wires that make the whiz bang pop thing work. So we got her running again. So, it just never got put back together because it has issues. At some point, I am gonna put it back together. Yes, it's homely as a very homely thing. Um, I'm not particularly fond of the cab. It might end up just taking the doors off and leaving it as a open station cabbed tractor. Air conditioning has never worked. So I'm pretty well just going to take this off because pretty sure it's not meant to sound like that. And these add on uh, AC units back there were they were better than nothing but they're not great anymore so what i need it for i don't need ac this is pretty much just going to be for running the mixer wagon during the winter so what had happened was it was making its own engine oil now the oil was still looked like oil so we knew it wasn't antifreeze uh so i wasn't along for most of this ride this poor old relic was sent up to a local workshop where they told us it probably needed a whole brand new engine, uh, which was probably going to end up costing about five or six thousand um, dollars. And at that point, the other partners just said, nah, it's not worth putting that much money into it. Uh, and it's not going to be in the farm sale. It was going to get junked. It was going to get scrapped. Uh, to which I stepped into the game and said, I'll take it. If anyone's scrapping it, it'll be me. So, got it running. It still runs. Like, this actually still runs. But when you're making your own engine oil, it gets pretty smoky and pretty messy pretty quick. So, I loaded the trailer, brought it home. Uh, parked it over there, as you'll have seen in previous videos. Yes, the big ball of light is back. Uh, I did get it running. Took it down to the, the silage yard with the mixer wagon. It ran for a little while and then it started making lots of smoke and lots of mess and retired it again. So, some of you already know where I'm going with this. The whole concept of the engine was toast because it's making its own engine oil. Never sat well with me. Um, needless to say, tentatively, 
after a quick Google search and playing around on the YouTubes, which we're currently on here now, YouTube, or up there it says YouTube, I'm leaning more towards injectors. Oh, hello, Mr. Wasp. You know, it's about to, uh, you're about to die. Oh, you must have a home in there or something. Um, everything's pointing to either cracked injector. I don't know if it's injector cup. I've never seen these injectors. I have worked on other injectors. And I can see the word injector many, many more times. But what I'm leaning towards uh, is stuck injectors due to fuel contamination which is highly possible because this thing was on an auger and a grain vac most of its life so the chance of crud getting down through the filters like those filters have been on a long time so between all of that there's a good chance that there's crud in the injectors and when the injector is stuck the little pin instead of seating back down and stopping is stuck part way in the sleeve and so now the fuel is just feeding down through the uh, overflow and going down through and just dribbling down through the cylinders and into the sump. Um, so the plan is pull all of these injector lines off, get that the rack out of the way, and then try and crack those injectors loose and pull them out and then soak them in... Uh, uh, gum cleaner, something like that. I've got carb cleaner anyway. Um, soak them for a while because there is some kind of nasty stuck up in the back side of this engine. I don't know whether it's just burnt oil or what it is, but it is like tar. So I got to uh, undo the rest of these lines, pull the injectors, and then we'll have a better idea of where we're at. Try not to get too much stuff falling down inside the engine. Because that's not good. Gooder. Okay. We'll charge on. Let's try and break stuff. Okay. So we're back. Well, as you can tell, we are elbows deep into this now, boys. So the, heart, the injector lines are off. There's the rack up there. Nice rack. Uh, the injectors are pulled. Now, one, two, three. Now, one, two, and four came out really well. Three came out really well, but was very wet. Five and six were a bit of a problem. We kind of crossed that a little bit at the start. But as you can see, like I pulled a bunch of hoses and stuff out of the way. There's the return line. Just folded it over and stuck a bolt into it. There's a lot of carbonized, I'm assuming that's just sump oil that's been carbonized on the top of the engine. Uh, I'm going to try and get in here. If you all can see that. I I got nothing. I, 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 I don't quite know what to say. Um, if you look at these. And then... I'll pull this out. And then I'll try and shine you down there. And then you look at that. One of these things is not like the other. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not good. So I'm pretty sure that one of the course of actions is I'm gonna have to pull the fuel tank because uh, the tap, which is the feed, and then the point closest to you with the elbow is the return. As you can see, they're wet. So I'd like to take that off, take a look at them. Plus I need the tank out of the way because I'm pretty sure these, at least these two rear ones, the next one seems okay. The seal, you can kind of, anyone can chime in here. The seal seems okay, and I've stuck my finger down in there, and it seems fairly smooth, like the cup is fairly smooth. 
but yeah, you probably can't see a dang thing in there. So you guys can climb in there. I can't. I'm a bit of a shaved yeti up here. But you guys are nice and small and skinny in there. Watch, don't bang your head. Um, so we'll go from the front of the engine, number one. Bosch. These are uh, these are Bosch injectors. Um, number two. Still looking pretty good. Tips are a little coked up. Number three, this is the one that was uh, very wet. Uh, number four, it's looking about the same as number three. Yeah. They're uh, a, bit of a bit of a mess. So this leads me to believe the injector cups are probably not good. Um, and those astute will realize the, uh, the washer's gone. Yeah. And I can't tell. Uh, I think you can tell. Um, the washer's still in there. It's, I know it's, it's there. Like, you can kind of tell in the injector that there was a washer. At least, at least that far we got. So, you have to pull the cups. Pretty sure. Um, got to clean, pull the cups. I'm hoping I don't have to pull the head. I shouldn't have to, because none of this is pointing towards head issues. My head, not its head. So, hmm. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more poking and picking and see if I can get those uh, washers out of there and then do some more, more uh, unbolting. I'll bring you back. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, uh, we're going to be doing corn stover bales for the first time. Uh, the ones we build up this spring. Um, so this video that you're currently watching has ended up getting longer than the 15 minutes the iPhone allows me to upload. So it'll be a two part. So I'm hoping these two will be back to back. But if not, be patient. The second part will be along momentarily. I'll go and do these girls. Please hold on while we switch over to these messages.